Hello, brothers and sisters. This is Kevin Cosby here in Louisville, Kentucky, St. Stephen Baptist Church with another powerful point to ponder as we spend meaningful moments with God's word. Thank you for joining me again today as we continue to explore this one theme of, of, of why. God, why do you allow trouble to come? Why, God? According to the, to the surveyor, uh, uh, George uh, Barner, that that's the number one question people have. If they could ask God one question is, God, why do you allow suffering? Why do you allow suffering? And we're trying to, to explore this question that all of us have in the midst of suffering. God, why? Look at this verse with me, Psalm 34, verse 18. It reads, the Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those whose saves those who are crushed in spirit. Now notice it does not tell us the why of the broken heart, why God allows the broken heart, why God allowed those, allows those to have a crushed spirit. It gives us the answer to another W word, not the why word, but another W word, and that is the where word. Where is God when my heart has been broken? Where is God when my spirit has been crushed? It says the Lord is close. The Lord is close. That's where God is. It doesn't tell us why, but it tells us where. God is close to us. Now, let me give you the back the back story to this verse. The back story is David's son, Absalom, the King David's son, Absalom, has rebelled against him and is trying to kill him, undermine him, and take his throne away from him through a coup d'etat, through the rebellion. And David is crushed by this. His heart is broken by this because it's someone close to him. And unfortunately, the closest sometimes do the mostest. And he's crushed, he's hurt, he's devastated. His spirit is broken and bruised. Well, here's some lessons we can learn from this. And that is number one, you can't make someone love you. David did everything for Absalom and he still betrayed his own father. And you can do a lot of things for people, but if folk don't love you, you can't make them love you. And not only can you not make them love you, you can't make them stay in love with you. You can't do it. Love is something that's freely given. Look, look, brothers, you can give a woman that you love so much, a brand new Cadillac, but if she don't love you, she'll have some other brother ratting in the car with her because you cannot make folk love you. And this is the mistake that David has made. You might as well just deal with the fact that you got a broken heart instead of trying to buy someone's love or to manipulate someone into loving you because love is something that is freely given. And what we don't want, the reason I guess we do that is because we, we don't want the broken heartedness. So we want to live in this delusional world that they really love me. No, they don't love you. They love all the things that you can do for them, but they don't really love you. And that's that's heartbreaking. But why does God allow that to happen? Why does God allow for the brokenheartedness? I, I, I can't answer that. No one can answer the why question. We can answer this question. We can answer where is God? God is with us when we're broken heart. And we can also answer the what question, the another W word, and that is what can come out of this? And I think that's what we need to focus on. When we've been brokenhearted, ask yourself not the why question, ask yourself the W where question and the what question, what can I get out of this? That's an important question. So many times when we're going through things, we want to know, God, how can I get out of this? And that's, that's understandable. But maybe another question instead of how can I get out of it, out of this, is what, what can I get out of this? And when life has, has dealt you a bad deal and you're brokenhearted and you've been betrayed like David has, and your spirit is crushed because of something devastating, because the closest do the most, is, this is what God can do so that you can get something out of it. Don't waste your pain. We talked about that several months ago, don't waste your pain, get something out of it. And this is what you get to get out of. Know this, that when God allows you to be brokenhearted, four G words, G word number one is this, God is using the brokenheartedness to goad you, to goad you. 
What do you mean? You know what a goat is? A goat is a pointed stick so that when animals who aren't plowing, like an ox is plowing and it won't move, the children would come beside the animal with a very sharp pointed stick and goad or stick the animal. Why does why does the child stick the animal? Because it's a goad. It gets the child, the, the, the excuse me, the, the animal moving. And the Bible teaches that God goads us. God allows painful things to move us forward. In fact, when you look over your life, in many instances, what helped you develop and mature was something bad happened that goaded you, that made you grow up. Proverbs 20 verse 30 says this. It says, sometimes it takes a painful experience to make us change our ways. So the painful experience, you didn't like the painful experience, but you said, I'm never going to experience this pain anymore. So I'm going to allow the, the, the trouble to gold me. That's what happened to the prodigal son. Remember, he was in the hog pen because of his mischievous living. And it was that hog pen experience that caused, that goaded him to go back to his father. So sometimes God uses the broken heart to goad me. Now here's the second G. The first G is sometimes God uses a painful experience to goad me, to move me in a different direction. But sometimes God uses this, a painful experience to guide me. Hebrews chapter 12 and verse seven says this. It says, let God train you for he is doing what any loving father does for his children. Whoever heard of a son who has not been corrected. So God is not only golden me, God is guiding me. God is teaching me saying, look, I want you to learn not only what works, but I want you to learn what doesn't work, which is what the word of God is supposed to do for us, by the way. The Bible says the, that the, the word of God is profitable for doctrine, so we'll know what's right. Profitable for reproof, so we'll know what's right, not right. Profitable for, inst uh, for uh, instructions, so we'll know how to get right. Profitable for righteous living, so we'll know how to stay right. And sometimes God uses the word of God not only to goad me, to push me forward, because I can get stuck in some bad situations. So God will let somebody hurt my feelings. So I'll quit that job, start my own business, go back to school, lose the weight, stop the smoking, gold me. Sometimes God uses it to guide me so I can learn what doesn't work. Amen. You tell me, I'll tell you one thing. When, when, it, when some, Abraham Lincoln said that when a cat sits on a hot stove, that cat will be guided. It will never sit on a hot stove again. And sometimes God has to use troubles to gold me, to guide me, and then put this down. Third G word, God uses trouble to gauge me, to gauge me, to determine what I am made of, to, to help me discover what level of faith I have. Isaiah chapter 48 and verse 10 says this, watch this, look at this word. It says, see, I have refined you, though not as silver, I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. I have tested you in the furnace of affliction. In other words, you can't determine what, what your faith really is until your faith has been tested in the furnace of affliction. James chapter one, verses two and three, talks about how God gauges me. He said, consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. You know that under pressure, your faith is forced into the open and shows its true colors. So when you're tested, that shows who you are. They don't put medicine out on for the public to use until it's been tested. The, the vaccine uh, for COVID-19 was not made available to the public until it's been tested. Uh, a car is, before it is introduced to the public, it goes through certain tests. Everything gets tested before it gets used, because if it cannot be tested, it cannot be trusted. And sometimes God allows you to go through something now because God is testing you and saying, you know what? I want to see if you're the type of woman or the type of man that can endure the furnace of adversity, because I've got something that I'm getting ready to do and take you to. So the trouble is not because God's trying to 
eliminates you. The trouble comes sometimes because God is trying to watch this, not eliminate, but elevate you, take you to another level. And God can't take you to the other level unless God first engages you to see what you're made of. So God uses trouble to what? Gold me, guide me, gauge me. And then finally, God uses trouble to grow me grow me. James 1 and 4 says this. So let it grow and don't try to squirm out of your problems. For when your patience is finally in full bloom, then you will be ready for anything strong in character, full and complete. You will be ready. You will be ready. You ever watch a boxer who can be in a boxing ring. Periodically, I'll go on ESPN and watch some of the old fights of Muhammad Ali and how he could take those punches. Well, he could take those punches, absorb the punches because he had been sparring for, for, for years that conditioned his body to take the blows. And God allows troubles to condition us to take the blows. Some of the things that used to cause you to fall apart and make you become unglued and emotionally discombobulated, uh, it don't bother you anymore. You've been through too much. You're a big girl. You're a big boy now. And that's because those troubles have toughened you, matured you. So uh, what people say to you, you think to yourself, well, it doesn't matter what they say because they are a non-factor. It does not matter what you think, what you say, because God used the trouble to help grow me. Well, Absalom broke David's heart and there will be some people and things in life that will break your heart. And you will ask why I can't make sense out of the nonsense of why I do, can't answer the question of where God is with me when I'm broken hearted. And I can answer the question, what, what can I get out of it? I can get out of it that God has learned this trouble to go me, to guide me, to gauge me and to grow me again, for we know all things work together for good for them that love the Lord. What the devil means for evil, God can use for good. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Help us to get this in our spirit and truly believe that you're working with us. You're close to us, even in the pains of life. Oh, thank you, Lord, for this reality that we're not by ourselves. You're with us in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being with me here on another Powerful Point to Ponder. If you don't have a church home, we'd love to have you become a part of St. Stephen Church. It will do you good. You can do us good. We can, we can bless you. You can be a blessing to so many other people in fellowship with other believers. So contact us, newstart at ssclive.org. And don't forget, tonight is Bible study. I've been out uh, for a couple of weeks. I thank God for Pastor Ken, who's is my brother and partner in ministry, and but I'll be in the pulpit tonight. So come and join me tonight in the praise team and worship team as we have a great time in the word of God. God bless you. You have a blessed day. Until we meet again tonight, don't forget the protocol of COVID-19. During COVID-19, don't forget to stay safe, stay sane, and stay masked in Jesus' name. God bless you. See you tonight.